Hi, welcome to the continuation of our Simply Maya free lava lamp tutorial. Um, if you've been following along with Rick, you'll see I have his scene open here. Um, if you're not interested in the modeling portion, you can of course just download the scene file from the site and jump right in. Or if you've modeled your own lava lamp, feel free to use that. Now I'm going to keep the dynamics for this quite simple, um, as we're aiming this tutorial very much at new users of Maya. So you should be able to follow along regardless of your um, skill level with dynamics. So we're going to start by creating some liquid N particles to mimic this um, waxy sort of substance you see in lava lamps. And I'll just turn Rick's reference images off so we don't have to deal with that. And the first thing we need to do is get some particles in this scene. So I'll flip my menu to N dynamics end particle and I'm just going to rip off this tool by clicking it and mine have already been set to water so you want fill object so select the object that you want to fill bring up the dialog box and at default it looks like this now the higher you make the resolution in some respects the better you'll get your simulation but also the longer it will take now I'm going to set mine to 25 which should just just be just about right for this. Um, could be a little higher. I leave you to experiment with that, but for our intents and purposes, for the speed we want for this particular tutorial, 25 should do just fine. So, as you can see, that worked, and it filled our body of our lava tube here, or the tank of the lava tube, with particles. I make sure I have some frames down here, and if I hit play, you'll just see these drop straight through everything because by default these won't interact with standard geometry you need to click the geometry go up to end mesh and create a passive collider this way these particles will collide with this mesh okay let me just work out what i did wrong there now oh, there we go so as you can see, these uh, have a water-like motion, um, and they should compress down quite nicely. Now, we don't want to start our lava tube animation with the lava uh, completely enveloping the tank. So what we do is we simulate these frames. So if we go back, I'll simulate again. I'll wait until these have settled down a bit. And then I'll set these to the initial state. So basically, I'll tell Maya that this is the start point I want my particles at. So let's give that a couple of frames more. And as you can see at this resolution, it's, it's pretty fast. Um, so select my end particle here in my outliner. Go up to end solver, initial state, set from current. And you'll see now when I rewind that is actually the initial state of my particles now of course what we want to do is have them rise up the tube in a nice sort of globular manner in the same way that you would see in a normal lava lamp and then when they get to the top we want them to start to float back down so there's myriad of different ways to do this i'm going to do it the simplest way that i can think of um, which is just to use a volume axis field to drag them up and then let them go. So with your end particle selected, you can field, field, volume axis, and this will um, create you one of these. Uh, and it will also be connected to this particle object. So if I just put that in there and hit play, you should see a small... No, the strength of this is not great enough. So. Just for demonstration purposes, if I turn this up from 50, you'll see these particles blown away from this volume axis. There you go. Maybe if I flick that up to an extreme value, that you can see them being manipulated by this. Um, this is obviously not the effect we want, but I just thought I'd show you that that is indeed working. You can see them being blown up the outside of the tube. So we'll set that back to its default value of 5. And we're going to use this to pull particles from the bottom up to the top. So I'm going to resize it so it covers the whole tube. Select it here. Okay. And what we want is really to move this until it's inside the cap but we also need it to cover some of these particles. So I'm going to have to scale it a little like so. 
and I think I'll actually flip into one of my side views to do this. So I want this to cover some but not all of the particles. So I'll put mine about here and the reason for this will become clear to you as we progress with the tutorial. And this is one of the nice things with this sort of dynamic setup. You can experiment, you'll get totally different result if your volume axis field is here than you would have got if it was here. Um, and the nice thing with this is that you can experiment with this and hopefully create something that you like. Um, I'm going to show you what I like, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it exactly the same way I'm doing it. So if I now hit play on this, you'll see we have very little going on because once again our magnitude is, is set very low. So I'll just up the magnitude on this so you can see what would happen here. And you can see immediately those particles are sort of blasted downwards. And if you look at the arrows on our volume axis field, this is the way that the force is pushing. And obviously we don't want to push, we want to pull. So if I go down here and away from center is currently 1, if I set it to minus 1, you'll see that our arrows here invert themselves. And now when I play, you'll see we get these particles sucked up to the top of the lava tube. Now you might also notice that that doesn't actually look like lava, as in the fact that it's, it's faster than a greyhound. Um, so if I go up to the particles, Open my up, pop up my outliner again, end particle. First thing I want to do is change this conserve value. Now this will basically uh, tell the particles how much of an effect the external forces are having on them. So for instance, if I set this to 0.9, and this is quite a sensitive value, uh, the difference between 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.8 you know, is, is quite uh, dramatic. So now when I do this, you'll see that these rise up a little more slowly. That's still a little fast for my liking. Um, so I'm going to tweak this to 0.85. Okay, and that's a lot more sort of the speed I would expect to see. It's still too fast. So I'm going to come to my volume access and turn the magnitude down to say 30. Okay, and now I get a little bit more of the sort of speed that I'm looking for. But the particles that go up, it's too thick, it's too much. So I need to um, tell this to have less of an effect, basically. So I'm just going to set the attenuation, which is really just a... Uh, the strength of how much the field diminishes at a distance um, is probably easier to show you. So at the minute we have this and you can see particles are being taken from all over the place. If I were to set the attenuation to 1, you should see them only really come up from the middle. There we go. That still looks uh, too high for my liking. So I'll probably end up with an attenuation of say 2. 0.5, we'll try. There we go, that looks a lot more like the sort of effect I expect to see. Um, I'm going to tweak this under the end particle liquid simulation a little more also. So if we go down to liquid simulation, incompressibility is, um, well, fairly self-explanatory. If I just set it to 2, you'll see here that they don't compress as much, so I get bigger clumps sort of forming. And the rest density is really how, uh, how dense the particles become together when they're at rest. So if I change this to 5 as an example, you'll see all these particles have a tendency to push more towards each other. Um, and obviously they're now so pushed together that this is having huge problems um, pulling them up. But if I tweak that from its default to 2.5, I think this will actually give us a nicer result here on our lava. I kind of like the way it sort of breaks up and you know forms these big sort of viscous waxy blobs.
Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, by tweaking the values that I've showed you, the incompressibility, the rest density, um, the conserve for the particles, you can pretty much get a variety of different effects with this. And by tweaking the magnitude and attenuation of this volume axis field, you can control how many of these particles are actually pushed towards the top and, you know, um, how fast they go up. Now, one problem we have is particles go up, but they do not come down. And the way a lava lamp works is the wax is heated up at the bottom, it rises to the top, and when it gets to the top, it starts to come back down again. So I'd like to mimic that motion before I wrap this part of the tutorial up. So in order to do this, I'm going to use a very simple expression. I'm just going to use a sine wave, um, which will allow me to turn this field sort of on in a gradual well, wave, and then off, and then on, and then off, so the, the particles will actually undulate upwards and then back down and upwards and down. So we can create a proper animation out of this thing. So if I select attenuation here, and create new expression. What I really want to do is the magnitude, sorry, definitely not the attenuation. What I really want to do is tell it that the magnitude is equal to the inbuilt Maya sine function uh, time over 2, which that's basically the frequency. Now we want to deal with the amplitude, so I'm going to hit times. Um, 15 plus, so now we're dealing with the offset 15, and we'll hit create. And what you should see now is that we get the same sort of motion we had before with the particles going up. But now they'll start to come back down again. Now, if I was um, going to complicate this a little more we go into more scripting to get a more much more realistic motion of this but I think for the confines of this tutorial um, that should do it so I'm going to be back in part two of this to show you how to mesh these out so we'll go away from par particles and create meshes around these so we can come back in the third part and render this out and get you some actual um, lava, uh, some waxy lava for your lava lamp. Alright, thanks for watching. See you in part two.